All right, let's begin with just a few of the warm ups, starting with the knees. Timing with the breath and letting that travel down to the ankles in the other direction. Now, as Roshi said in his talk, we're coming into the best part of session the last couple of days. And as we move up to the hips, if you've been working on the hara, as we rotate the hips, this is a good time if you've been feeling the accumulation of that energy to let go of any efforting around that, any efforting to accumulate or to contain the energy there and just let it circulate. So we're still putting our mind there, but the last couple of days of session, if we're fortunate and we've been working, the practice the other direction, often starts to carry itself. And that effortlessness of samadhi that sometimes happens is a wonderful thing because as long as we're efforting, we're involved. So as long as I'm efforting, Sean is doing, and we can get into the non-doing phase of session at this point. At least this is the way it often is for me. Let's do the shoulders. And it doesn't mean that we're spacing out or anything. We're completely invested in the practice. It's just how much effort can we release? And how much can we let the practice carry itself? So that goes for our practice today with the body too, is let's work with ease and relaxation primarily. And let's do the shoulder shrugs forward and back. And with some of that also, work with the upper back arching and flexing as much as feels comfortable and especially tomorrow we're going to when we do the stretching part we're going to be more back into the simpler warm-ups now the other direction and relaxation because we just won't need the stretching as much when we're in the last part of session. So maybe we can move into the effortless part of effortless effort instead of the effortful part of effortless effort. Again, I want to get down to the floor pretty soon today. So let's just shake out. And as we did yesterday, let's use a forward bend to come down to all fours for cat cow. So we know how to do this, which is stretching up and walking the hands down the thighs is the safest way to do this while protecting the back. Keeping the knees a little bit bent. You can walk them down as far as is comfortable. The only thing I suggest is not to put the weight right on the knees. And you can keep the legs bent. And if it's most comfortable to still support some of the weight, please do. But 
one thing we might find is that if we alternately flex one knee more and then the other one, there's, we're working a certain area in the hip, which feels good to work. So, and when we feel like we've hit that spot where the stretch is happening, we can just pause and breathe into it for a little bit. And just remembering the relaxation response that goes with the exhale. So on the inhale, we can imagine inhaling into that area that we're stretching and on the exhale, just releasing further. And just that simple action of alternately straightening one knee while flexing the other gets you into an area of the hip that's hard to stretch any other way. I gotta say that feels pretty good. And then if we want to dangle a little bit, if it feels good for our body, you can keep the knees bent. You can fold the arms like so. And just do a little swaying back and forth, maybe shaking up the head a little bit. And then as we're ready, I want to again do those lunges. So before we get down to tabletop, why don't we move through a lunge on one side? It can be either side. For me, I'm taking my right leg back and keeping my left knee bent like so. And this may be enough of a stretch already. Feel free to go from fingers to, to uh, fists, if that feels better for your wrists, or feel free also to put the hands up on the knee, which I'll attempt to show through the camera here. There we go. And whichever way you do it, it's the moving back and forth of the front knee will help you find the stretch point for the back hip. But the front hip is also getting a different kind of stretch. So let's, let's breathe and work it a little in a way that feels good to you. You may want to move forward and back a little. You may want to hold if you find just the right spot. The main thing is to keep the breath going. If you're feeling ambitious and want to come all the way up, it's hard to show this on the camera, but just put an upward reach to it. You can do that. Or elbows, forearms, and the front knee. These are all variations that have a little bit of a different effect. And then the next exhale, Let's move to tabletop. We will do the other side. But first, I want to just move through tabletop and do some cat cows. And again, the, uh, the challenge in the cow pose, which is the sunken back, is to not overdo the lower spine, but to get between the shoulder blades. And you can take a little time to do that, if you wish. And then the challenge in the cat is to get some of the stretch into the lower back, so it's not all in the upper back. And you can play with twisting a little bit and moving and also rotating. the hips and pelvis, see if you find any stretch points that feel like they could use a little work. I've got one here, so when, they, when we find a point like that, 
which I'm feeling across here down to the hip. Again, we use that breathing into it and then exhaling and just letting it release a little bit. If you want to keep doing the straight ups and downs, you can do those a lot. When we're in the cow position, really letting that area between the shoulder blades sink and the shoulder blades come together. When we're doing the cat, really experimenting with how much you tuck the pelvis is what brings it into the lower back. You might want to finish by shaking it out. And let's do the puppy dog pose again, which is hands reach forward. And the butt slides back, but as it go all the way down, we kind of find a middle ground where the chest is stretching towards the floor. The forehead head is probably not reaching the floor. We're feeling the stretch across the fronts of our shoulders, underarms, chest. Letting the shoulder blades come together in the middle of the back again, and that thoracic spine to dip down to kind of counter the curve that it usually that's its customary position. We can also play with the hips a little bit. So today's more about letting go and releasing than about pushing anything. And one interesting thing to do can be, once your hands are really placed, to let the hips fall further back and then getting a good stretch out of the shoulders, the upper arms stretching from the shoulders, which is also helpful. And then from here, we can shake out a little in between if we want, but we can widen the knees, bring the heels together, and we can go all the way down into child's pose. The hands still stretched out in front, the knees wide. And I should have mentioned again, it's useful to have a zafu nearby or something. For many of us, our foreheads will be able to rest against the mat, but if it doesn't, I suggest grabbing a zafu. And you also may need something for under your knees if your knees are sensitive. And this is just a rest pose. We're just going to stretch out the arms as much as we can. If you wish, you can bring the hands up on fingertips to accentuate the stretch between the shoulder blades. But then once you're down to the rest position, it's just about letting go. Just for a few breaths, non doing. And again, a number of these movements or positions may make it easy to feel the horror or more easy to feel it. So we're certainly doing that, putting the attention there. But just, it's just awareness, it's not doing. It's allowing the energy to circulate and move. And just releasing it against the ground, letting gravity take you. This is, of course, a passive stretch for the hips, shoulders, upper back.
Okay, so if you're ready, let's slowly push ourselves up. And we're going to do that lunge we did earlier on the other side. So, in this case, it's my right foot forward. And the back foot is down so that the toes are pointed backwards. So we're not standing up on the toes in the back. And let's just find that distance between the two legs that feels like we're getting the right stretch for our body. Again, palms, fingertips, fists, or hands on thigh, or forearms on thigh. All of that works. Whatever feels good. And we're just going to move back and forth a little bit till we feel stretch happening on both hips, especially the rear one, but the front one as well, which is breathing. And see if you can release the muscles that are needed for the pose. We don't need to clench our faces, our jaws, our necks, our shoulders. See how much release is possible, how much letting go. As you feel ready, we'll slowly Move out of the pose. I want to show you a good pose for the hips that I don't think we've done yet. To do this, you'll need to lie on your back. I don't think we've done this yet. And this is called the figure four. So what happens is one knee comes up, in this case it's my right knee. And I'm going to take the other leg up and we're going to cross it over that knee. I hope you can see this. Yep. And then you might need something under your head, you might not. We're going to reach through part of the figure four and we're going to grab our thigh or just below our knee on the shin. And we're going to pull that leg that was pointing to the foot, that had the foot planted on the floor, we're going to pull that toward the chest. If you like, you can lift your head at the same time. And if you like, you can play around with the position of your other arm to push that cross knee away from you. And I bet you're going to feel that in the hip. And breathing into it. It might be easier to relax into it if you put your head back down. Especially the hip that has the foot crossed over. Inhaling into it, exhaling, releasing again. We're on our backs, so a lot of our other muscles are not needed for this. So see if we can let them go. Always come out of it any time if it doesn't feel right for your body. On your exhale, slowly release. So we'll do the same on the other side. So in my case, the left foot goes to the mat, the other foot crosses over. I'm going to reach through and grab my shin. I can actually use my elbow to push out the knee on the cross leg a little bit. Lifting my head or not makes somewhat of a difference to the pose. But then once you settle in, I would suggest putting your head down because it's easier to relax into it. 
And releasing any effort not needed, releasing the face, jaw, neck. And with each exhale, maybe we can move a little further into it. Again, we don't have to push the edge. Just as much as feels like a comfortable, useful stretch. No strain. And then on the exhale, we can come out of it. I'd like to finish for today by sitting using a Zafu. And I just want to show a couple stretches that can be done right from meditation position. And of course, we don't want to make a big show of stretching in the Zendo all the time. It's not like it's a gymnasium or anything. But nonetheless, if we're sitting Burmese or half lotus, or I call this quarter lotus with the foot up on the palm, oftentimes I will do a little stretch before settling into sitting, just when everyone's settling down. Not too obtrusive, or if we're in the zendo and waiting for the teacher to get up. I can't do this anymore because I'm the one they're waiting to get up sometimes. <laughs> but anyway, um, oftentimes this, uh, remember this joining of the palms like this, I'll do that behind. And you can kind of use the back of the zafu to get a little stretch out of the back. If you kind of hook it over the end of the zafu, and use that as a little leverage to link hands and lift the chest up just to kind of reverse that tendency to slump. It's a great stretch for the shoulders. Breathing, it only takes a moment to do while you're waiting for the teacher to get up. If you like, you can lift the chest and Lift the chin if it feels good for your neck and head. And breathing again, rolling the shoulders back, uh, bringing the shoulder blades together as much as is comfortable, almost as though holding a pencil between them. And then an exhale releasing. Uh, another one I will do sometimes when settling in is the simple twist. Uh, so in this case, I'm taking my right hand, putting it over my left knee. The other palm comes behind and we're stretching up while twisting and looking over the shoulder. In this case, my left shoulder. I'm turning to the left, one palm behind, one over the knee. And this I'll often do just when I'm settling in to begin sitting. And we can do the other side too. It's always good to balance sides. Breathing always. Releasing. This one I see a lot of people do anyway, which is just the simple forward bending like this. And if you can, put the forearms or forehead to the ground. Such a nice stretch on the hips. Oftentimes at home I'll do all these, either going into sitting or coming out of. Like I say, we don't want to make too much of a show of it in this end up, but we can do a little bit. And this also can be combined with the hands stretching forward 
looks like the child's pose, or like the puppy dog pose. And then lastly, let's do the pencil stretch sitting, which again is these palm, these fingers join, palms turn over. And it works quite well to just do it right from here, just stretching upward. And if it feels good on your neck and head, lifting up. If it doesn't, then please don't. It's about extending the neck always rather than crunching. And it's about breathing always. Okay. Releasing when you're ready. Let's just do a one minute little body scan here. Really one minute. Palms up is helpful because that tends to make the shoulder blades fall into a natural position and relax. And let's just do a three breath scan, starting from top to bottom. Inhale and on the exhale, releasing forehead, temples, eyes, eye sockets, sinuses, nose area, upper jaw, back of skull, lower jaw, neck. Another inhale, exhaling down, base of neck, shoulders upper arms, upper back, shoulder blades, sternum, rib cage, down the arms, all the way at the hands, down out know, to the bottom of the ribs, and the back, just releasing with the exhale. Another inhale, and we're gonna exhale all the way down, lower back, sacrum, pelvis, hips, internal organs, thighs, hamstrings, knees, calves, shins, ankles, feet, toes, keeping residual with the last bit of exhale draining the beard. Thank you all very much. See you in the Zendo.